Alright, I've gotten tons and tons of requests to make a video about this rogue, but, you know, it's sort of hard to do. It's got a lot of different names. I've got them all in the description. I'm not going to go through them right now. But, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the program a little bit, and then give you guys two slightly different ways of removing it. So, let's go ahead and run it. And two things have just happened. For one, it has made a uh, registry change, essentially rerouting any .exe file to run another process of this fake AV. In this case, it's called Win7 Home Security. And the second change is that it's installed a rootkit. And that basically means that any changes that you make to the registry are going to get uh, reverted back to this. So, it's got your operating system by the balls. And Malwarebytes is not going to help you. And neither is putting in a registration key because the rootkit will still be there and it'll still keep bringing this back to life, essentially. And it doesn't really matter where the files were dropped because if you delete them, it's just going to make another copy of it. So, not even worth getting into. In this case, it's named akj.exe. And it is dropped in my app data folder in here somewhere. Anyway, so the program itself, it's got the tabs on the left, basic stuff, can't get into support, you have to buy the full version to get support, can't change the settings, and, alright, we'll look at that later, and like I said, you can't run any other programs, for example, Solitaire, you can't run, um, Chrome, you can't run, not even Calculator. So, you're basically screwed, except for the fact that you can rename executables, .exe files, into, like, .com files, .scr, so, we'll be doing that later, but the first step for removal for both, uh, guides is going to be booting into safe mode with networking. And so to do that, you reboot your computer and get to the F8 menu. So, go ahead and do that. Alright, so you go down to safe mode with networking, and it'll start booting up. Alright, so now that you're in safe mode, you basically have two different methods of doing this. If, you ha if you're using a different browser, that would be anything other than Internet Explorer. So if you're using Chrome, uh, Firefox, Safari, Opera, I don't know why you'd be using Opera. But anyway, if you're using anything other than IE, you can go into wherever the uh, program file is and add a .com or a .scr extension. Or, if you're only using Internet Explorer, you're going to have to go to another computer right now and download Combo Fix and save it to a CD or a flash drive or something. And I'm going to be downloading Combo Fix from uh, Google Chrome here, so... Go ahead and open that up. And uh, that fake AV will keep popping up, so you'll just have to ignore it. Right, so we'll rename our browser to chrome.exe.pif. .pif. And it runs just fine. So now we go to download Combo Fix. And I have a link in the description for this, so don't get too worried about it. Alright, so when you download it, whether this be on a different computer or the same computer, you need to rename it to a .com or a .pif or a .scr. So see, we have it. Copy it to the desktop. Now, combofix.exe will become something simpler, like 5.com. Yes. Alright, so now that you have renamed it, or 
you've renamed it and copied it from a CD, go ahead and run it, the .com or .pif or whatever file, and Combo Fix will start to load. In safe mode, of course. And if something, if an open width window pops up, go ahead and ignore it because it'll go away by itself. Alright, so you have a disclaimer. Go ahead and click yes to the disclaimer. And a command prompt window will open and it might say that it will update itself. Go ahead and click OK and allow it to update. And it'll say that it'll restart. Allow it to restart. Now this might not happen just like that. Usually it'll just load up and then tell you the disclaimer and then um, another step and then it'll start to scan. But this is like uh, probably about the 20 or 30th friggin' take I've done of this video, so I'm not stopping. Sort of, uh sort of, um, I don't want to say ironic because it's not really ironic, but sort of interesting how the probably one of the hardest rogues to remove it's also been one of the hardiest, hardest videos I've had to make but anyway, the scanner um, it went ahead and started running and I was expecting it to have some, some sort of a dialogue wanting you to download some sort of um, recovery console you don't have to do that. You can click no, but if you want to, and if you're on XP, you can. I don't believe it even works in 7 anyway. So, after that, it'll say that it's scanning for infected files, and the second line is 100% true. It usually doesn't take more than 10 minutes, but it might take more than 10 minutes. It might take, like, up to an hour or so. And I believe there's 52 stages of combo fix. So... You'll have to wait for that. Usually the first, like, 10 or 20 are slow. The rest are pretty fast. And it's also worth mentioning that Combo Fix might unpirate your Windows 7. So, you know, if you use some sort of uh, a certain activation program from a certain Midwestern town, um, you might have to rerun it. So, I will just wait for the scan to finish and come back when it's done. Alright, so that was shorter than I expected. It finished pretty quickly and it's now saying that it deleted the file. And now we wait. So it says the system is infected, successfully restored, slui.exe, which is a certain executable. For, from a certain activation program. So now it's going to reboot Windows because of that, I think. Might be because of the rootkit too, but, you know, I don't know. And another issue I've had with this video is the f damn screen resolution. It's just been all jacked up. Alright, so it's rebooted my computer and it's made a uh, log file. Now normally, on a regular computer, it's not going to uh, reboot you and then make the log. Normally it'll do it from safe mode. But because this video has just been a pain in the ass to make, it's just going to do whatever. So uh, we'll just have to go with it. So anyway, it makes this log. You can go ahead and ignore it and close it. And at this point you would reboot out of safe mode and back into Windows and you should be good to go. As you can see I need to rename Chrome back to Chrome so definitely go ahead and do that. Local Google Chrome application Maybe I shouldn't have named it to a .pif, but... That was definitely dumb of me.
Come on, I can't change the name of the program. Alright, so don't save it to a .pif, because it will basically destroy your program. Destroy your browser, so definitely don't save it as a .pif file. .com or .scr only. Alright, so at this point you might want to go and download Malwarebytes and run a scan to pick up anything else it might have left over. And if this guide helped you, which, you know, it might have, um, I really do appreciate donations. I've got a link in the description at the bottom for that. So that is it for this sorry-ass rogue.